Hi, my name is Lisa Brightson Glenn. I'm a pediatric speech pathologist, certified oral motor therapist, and feeding specialist. Thank you for joining me today on this mini lecture about chewing. Why focus on feeding? Feeding is very important for nutrition, but it's also important for facilitating motor function for sensory awareness and also for sound production. One of the most important factors that impact feeding is muscle tone. Muscle tone is the natural tension of a muscle at rest. Our tone has a default state. Our nerves are continually firing to maintain that default state. If there is a physical disorder of low tone called hypotonia or high tone called hypertonia, this impacts on that natural state, that natural resting state, and it can impact on feeding and speech. Long before the chewing process starts, there's an ongoing communication with our sensory system and the motor systems. So when we put food into our mouth, that ongoing communication sends a signal to our brain indicating that the food has to be chewed and it has to be chewed in order for it to be safely swallowed. So now we have a positive sensory experience. And the next time we have that same piece of food, we're going to chew the food, we're going to have the sensory component, the taste, the flavor, the texture, the consistency, and our motor system will be able to chew that food effectively. But what happens if we're offered that same piece of food and we don't have the motor skills to move it to the back of our mouth to start the process of chewing? That food is going to sit in the front of the mouth where we don't have the muscles that are necessary to break down that piece of food. You may use an immature motor pattern such as a suckle or a munch chew in order to break down that piece of food. But there could be pieces falling at the front of your mouth you could be drooling, pulling of the pieces of food can occur in the front of your mouth. So that first example that I gave you of the food being able to move to the back of the mouth, the sensory pleasure, the motor involvement, you're not going to have that same experience. Why? because now we have jaw fatigue. If we can't safely engage in the process, the mechanics of breaking down the food, we're not going to want to swallow that food. And that's the ongoing communication between our sensory system and the brain. The brain is going to tell us that it's not safe to swallow. So for children that may have any deviant motor patterns, we need to get those muscles stronger to safely engage in chewing. So how do we do that? There are a couple of exercises that I like to use. Um, my favorite exercise is therapeutic gum chewing. I take a strip of gauze and a piece of gum. Typically I use icebreakers gum. I put it at the top of the gauze and I'll, I'll secure it by twisting it around and then I place it at the first back molar and I'll have the child engage in a bite and release. 
And then I may have them work up to three bite and release patterns and then work up to 10. And by doing this, a couple of things ha happen. The tongue will start to move over to the source, which is the gum, because it's getting uh, sensory feedback. The jaw muscle is getting stronger because we're gauge engaging in a repetitive movement. I could also use a chewy tube in order to work on strengthening the jaw muscle. And I often like to start by stuffing the chewy tube with uh, typically a veggie stick or a pretzel. Sometimes this is still hard for a child to engage in a bite and really so I may press on the chewy tube with my fingers just to break down the food a little bit. So this way when you do put the chewy tube on the first back molar and the child is engaging in the bite and release that they're getting some of the sensory experience from the food. Another exercise that I like to use is frozen fruit or regular food, a regular piece of fruit wrapped up in gauze and again placed on that first back molar. So the food is secured in the gauze. It's placed on the first back molar at the position of the jaw muscle. And again, we work on that repetitive bite and release pattern to make that jaw muscle stronger. I hope you enjoy the following videos of these therapeutic exercises that I just explained to you. Thank you. First bite and then hug. I like how you're tapping me. I like how you're tapping. Bite. Good. Marina, that's beautiful. Good. I love those two bites. Get the same on the other side and then you get another hug. Wow. 